Hello and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Emily Clark. The RIT men's lacrosse program is once again one of the best in the nation this season. The third ranked Tigers hosting Vassar College. And what a day for the Tigers offense, led by junior Jack Kristen, who scored one of his team leading six goals on the afternoon right here. The Tigers were in control from the start en route to an impressive 25 to 3 route of the Brewers. While in 14 games this season, RIT has outscored its opponents 213 to 95. While most of the offense has come from upperclassmen, one local freshman has made a significant contribution. However, what's surprising is that his days with the program may be numbered. Despite a decorated high school lacrosse career, Fairport native Kyle Sturgeon chose RIT for its academics rather than its athletics. When did you decide to come to RIT and how did you make that decision? A list of five schools, um, five that schools that had PA programs in um, Springfield and RIT had lacrosse programs. So it was between those two and Coach Cooney, I liked the program and it's close to home. So um, I want to say end of junior year, summer, that I chose to come here. In terms of deciding which school, was it worrying about who had a lacrosse program or if they had your major? The major was the main thing, and then lacrosse with Coach Schoen coming to me um, is definitely a plus, a big plus. Kyle has already proved to be a big plus for the Tigers program. In 14 games this season, he ranks six on the team in scoring with 14 goals and four assists. We were, again, a little unsure as a freshman. You know, you're not really sure if they're going to be a starter or, you know, kind of a role player for the year. Uh, with the loss of Brendan McDonald, that really opened up a slot down at attack. Um, and, you know, he certainly has met our expectations. Um, really what we've noticed is, is that he is truly a, kind of that steady Eddie type player. Um, you know, he's, he's out there doing the little things. Uh, and for a little guy, he's, he's a little tougher and scrappier than we originally thought. Uh, so um, he, he certainly met our expectations and he's played very solid uh, and hasn't you know, tried to do too much. He's kind of accepted his role for the year and relished that. I just worked hard in the off season, just put myself in a spot where I could, if they chose me, I'd be ready. So I just did what I could. Six on the team in points right now. So is that a shock to you? What's that been like? Offense running, running pretty well with all the guys working together. When, when we're clicking, it's good. So um, I'm successful because the other guys on the team are working hard too, so. While his lacrosse future looks bright at the moment, his days with the Tigers program may be numbered. Now Kyle is a PA major and after two years they usually recommend that they just focus on their studies and I talked to him before and he said he's taking it year by year with lacrosse in school. How does that make you feel in terms of a coach and him making such an impact so far? I guess I feel the same way he does. We'll take it year by year and see what happens. You know, I think um, Things may be changing in the PA program a little bit as far as you know how they handle athletes and, and how the, the athletes can balance their schedule with PA. Uh, I know that's kind of a work in progress. Um, you know, I think Kyle is one of those young men who can handle it. Um, he, he's, he's got it all together mentally and, and I think he's the type of kid who can play lacrosse and still get his studies done uh, even in a, you know, a demanding program like PA. Um, so we'll see how, how it pans out, you know, his third and fourth year, you know, obviously we hope that he's able to pull it off. The first couple years I can, I can handle it. It's with lacrosse, I can um, juggle it, but it's the fourth and fifth, maybe third year that I'm a little worried about, but I'm playing it by year. Now that we're switching to the semesters, the second year, it definitely gives me more time to balance school and lacrosse, so that should definitely help out in the next couple of years. For now, Sturzen plans to continue trying to balance lacrosse in his schoolwork, knowing he can't rest on what he's already accomplished. You know, just because he starts his first year doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the guy for four years. I mean, he's got to earn that spot. But like I said, I think he's the type that will work for it. I just want to play, help the team out, and be as successful as I can.
Welcome back to Sports Zone. It was a season to remember for RIT diver John Telgren, who shattered the school records in both the one and three meter diving events. But as Laura McShane reports, Telgren went on to do something that only five others have ever accomplished in school history. When did you first learn how to dive? Well, I started diving when I was in eighth grade. Um, I had been a ref wrestler previously, uh, like my brother, and I decided in middle school that I didn't want to wrestle anymore. So uh, my dad suggested that I try a new sport. So I went to the pool. The first day on the board, I learned a lot, actually, and I decided that diving was something that seemed fun that I wanted to try, and I stuck with it, and I've been diving ever since. What makes John such a great diver? There's a couple things. The, the number one thing is he's just a smart kid, um, and he's very fast. He can make quick decisions in the air, and he is really able to spin quickly, and those are the things that you need to have. How has he improved since he first joined the team? He's improved tremendously. He has really worked hard on his mechanics, uh, the small skills that you need to be able to make the dive well in a very, very fast and... Um, extremely technical sport. You've broken several school records, including one you previously set. What's it like to achieve all of this and only in your second year? It's been more than I could ask for because honestly, I, I don't set out to break records. You know, that was never my goal. That was never my mindset. Like, oh, I want to be up on that record board. Obviously, it's amazing and it's really awesome to say that I've done that. But, you know, I wasn't expecting it to come this early. Um, I'm just thrilled and pre pleasantly surprised that it worked out. It was just, you know, a really, really happy bonus. Tell us about your experience at the NCAA. I walked in and I, it felt different than I thought it was going to be. You know, you have all these pictures of what it's going to look like and it, it's different. But, um, you know, it felt really relaxed. I was kind of shocked that, uh, that before competition I was thinking it was going to be like, oh, this is nationals, but it felt really natural. And then, of course, when I got to competition, then it was a little different story. I've never shook on a diving board before, but before my first dive, I was like, my heart was drumming like crazy, and I was, I thought I was gonna fall off, but then it turned out okay, and uh, the, the, whole, the whole thing was a blast. How rewarding is it to coach an All-American? Well, it's great. I mean, this is what we do it for. We wanna make sure that the, the divers are successful, and, um, you know, it, it feels great to be on this end, to be able to have him um, do so well and really do a great job for RIT and be a great representative. Is it easier or harder to coach someone with this much potential? Oh, it's definitely easier. You always want to have kids with lots of potential. He is, uh, he's got a tremendous amount of talent, um, but he, he backs that up with hard work, so it's a good combination. How often does a diver like John come along in a coach's career? Not very often. We've been very lucky here at RIT to have some extremely talented divers. Um, Quinn Donahoe, Matt Joseph, uh, Ryan Schaefer, uh, three All-Americans within the last 10 years, and now he's our fourth. Um, but he's broken all their records, and now he's, uh, he's on a track that nobody's ever been on before at RIT. Telgren joins Greg Shively, Ryan Schaefer, Quinn Donahoe, Matt Joseph, and Evan Went as All-American divers at RIT following his eighth place finish in the one meter diving event at the NCAA Championships. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The outdoor track and field season has begun, but RIT's indoor distance medley team is still riding high after earning All-American status at the NCAA Championships in March. Melissa Bromley introduces us to the foursome who recorded the ninth fastest time in Division Three this year. I'm Adam Err, I run the 800 meter leg. I'm Cameron Lee, I ran the 400 meter leg. I'm Mike Kervac, I run the 1200 meter leg. I'm Matt Janino, I run the 1600 meter leg. What exactly is a distance medley relay team? A distance medley relay team is comprised of four people. 
We each run different distances. It starts with a 1,200 meter and then goes to a 400, 800, and then 1,600. Together, this foursome formed the most successful DMR team RIT has ever had. Now, how exactly did you guys all get paired up? I mean, Arnold's clearly one of the better milers around here. I mean, especially in New York. And I mean, Cyril's always been a really strong runner in the 800 and, and in the mile. So uh, I, th I, w I was definitely expecting a, a good performance in DMR this year. Oh, I just didn't expect to, I guess, run the DMR this year. This is literally the first year at RIT or ever really. I didn't run it in high school that I have really been a part of a DMR team. So it was a surprise and it was really special and really fun. We knew last year that uh, the three of us would be together to do like the distant part of it. And we knew Cam had his last year here. So we just wanted to go out there and just jam it and get a good one in. There weren't too many races that we actually ran as a, as a DMR team, but we, the ones that we did, we made, we made them count. The one that counted the most was the race at States, where their coach mapped out what they needed to do to reach nationals. What sort of guidance does your coach offer you? I think for us, he like, at least on the distance side of things, he got us to really uh, see that we were going to be able to do this. I know like right before the state meet, uh, he wrote down like all the times that we should uh, we should hit in order to run a time that would qualify us. And the, the time that we were supposed to run was 10.02, and that's exactly what we, that's exactly the time that we ran. So I think that was, uh, that was pretty helpful to see, like, right beforehand, like, that we could do it before we even raced it. Is there a lot of mental preparation, and how do you exactly prepare for each race? Uh, I don't know, for me, there it's really different for each individual runner. Uh, for me, I like to, I kind of like to visualize the race beforehand and try to like think of what could possibly go wrong or how the race should run. Uh, but sometimes you can kind of overthink things and uh, that kind of hurts you depending on the day. Uh, if things don't go the way you planned it, it kind of kind of throws you off and you may not run as well because of that. So you have, you have to be able to you have to be able to do both. You have to think about it well but also know that you have to adapt to the situation too. As for my leg, I just think uh, always to try to start off strong and start off fast and then just react to the race from there. Their strategy, teamwork, and talent shined through at Nationals. The foursome finished seventh and became the first DMR team at RIT to earn All-American honors. It was good to go to Nationals finally. Uh, it's a good way to end indoor, my, I guess my collegiate indoor season. Uh, it was just, uh, it was a good learning experience too, uh, learning to the the, I guess, the need to really race more tactically. It made it all worthwhile. Like, that, that's what everyone hopes to do when running in college is make it to nationals, and we were able to do that. So it was a great experience and a great way to reach the end. Was it nice to have that sort of experience where you're competing against these runners that have been there before and know what it's like and know what it takes to get there? Uh, for me, it just it was just another big meet. Uh, you get there and you know everyone's on a comparable field any given day. Probably any any one of the teams could have won. So it was just a matter of going out there and doing what we knew we could do. So I don't think I don't think not being there before hurt us so much. But it, it was just good to run in a field of comparable runners. And for your next year's medley team, what are you expecting? Having three new partners, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh. Not expecting much, I guess. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a rare occurrence. So it's the first medley team to be all American. So you don't find that often. Welcome back to Sports Zone. RIT has not had a football team on campus since the school fielded a Division III program back in the 1970s. But football has returned, and as Olivia Harrison discovered, it's a perfect match for RIT and Rochester's newest pro team. Football is back at RIT, and in a pretty big way. The Rock City Thunder is Rochester's very own newly instated indoor football team and we'll call RIT's Gordon Fieldhouse their new home. Why did you decide to host your event at RIT? 
MIT's Gordon Fieldhouse. Well, we think the field house is a great venue, and the chance to be in a suburban atmosphere uh, located in a central location and a phenomenal place like RIT is really a benefit. We think that will attract a lot of fans, a lot of kid-friendly type event. Uh, we like the fact that there's no alcohol. Uh, that really brings the right clientele for us. Back in the fall, uh, the team came to me, and uh, they were looking for a venue, and they wanted to start this team back up. Um, and we were a great fit for them with the campus, with our location, uh, family-friendly atmosphere, and uh, so far it's worked out well. Well, I think part of it was the, the owner's commitment to youth. So if you would notice, there was a lot of young kids here, and uh, he's local, and in our conversation with him, he's really excited about getting youth involved in, in football, and also, it's not just football, but just getting them involved in terms of self-esteem, pride, and the importance of education. So, And he's locally here in, in, in Henrietta, so that makes it even more special. So it's a kind of a natural fit for us, and certainly having football here, bringing the community in so they can see this. I mean, just walking around today, just hearing folks saying, wow, this place is awesome. There's a lot of people who've never been on our campus, and there's no reason for that. So if this is a way to get people on our campus to recruit these little guys, these little gals here, then we're all for it. Has the Gordon Fieldhouse ever hosted something like this before? You know, we haven't. Uh, we've never hosted anything really outside the box. And bringing football uh, inside, I know people have seen on, uh, you know, on TV, uh, but on campus and indoors in the field house, it's the most uh, probably outside the box uh, event we've done. What kind of impact do you think you'll have on the Rochester community and the RIT community? You know, my, my goal was uh, first and foremost to uh, bring some different entertainment on campus for the students, um, and second, to get people from the community, from off campus, on campus to see, uh, you know, see our venue and see our students and see uh, uh, what this campus has to offer. We've really worked hard with the RIT fan base, uh, meetings with the student council, student government. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, activities at local areas around RIT. So our goal is to give RIT something they don't have, a football team, and really embrace the student population here at RIT and kind of make it their team. As you can see in the background, we have the pep band who's here. We've also contacted the student flag football program. All of those groups have really uh, been very supportive, and uh, we've tried to make them part of the family. What influenced you to fly 3,000 miles to come up here to see the Rock City Thunder today? To me, coming back and seeing stuff like this means a uh, great closure to a great career. Um, I'm a proud dad of three little boys, and I want them to see football and be around as much as possible. And for me, a lot of these kids are ones that I mentored, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, my roommate in college, his little brother's out here playing now. And so this puts football in perspective. Uh, football wasn't as prominent as it is now. Uh, years ago, we didn't have this kind of stuff when I was coming up in high school and middle school. But this is great for kids to see how football can take on so many different roles. You can still be a professional with other jobs. You can still be a lawyer, an accountant and everything, and still get a chance to strap it up and play the game you love. And so this is a great side of football, and I think it's a great option for those that don't have a chance to go and play in the NFL. What are your expectations of this team in the future? Well, the long-range expectations are obviously we'd like to be part of the new ice rink facility, and we believe that uh, Rochester has enough fan base for pro football. And uh, with this type of venue, I think we'll be uh, developing large crowds over the course of the next few years. Well, don't forget that staying connected to SportsZone is now easier than ever thanks to the RIT SportsZone app. It's a must-have for all Tiger fanatics, and it's available to download now for your Android or Apple device. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT SportsZone. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.